Right away, I'm looking at this picture. Should I show it to you? Okay. Mom and I are on the beach. My dad is somewhere in the background there. I see her love. I see her smiling. I see that she's excited that I'm taking in the scenes myself. It's probably my first time walking on sand. I think that's what I was told. So um, yeah, I like that one. Mom, so vibrant, loved to laugh, loved to socialize, loved people, loved her family. And um, I still see pieces of that. It's not quite the way it used to be. Mom was always that person. <laughs> she would always come to my room, write a little note, or I'd come home from school and there's a note on my pillow just expressing some type of love. Um, we were a religious family. Um, faith is big in our home. And she would often leave a Bible verse of, of encouragement and support. And at the time, many times, I would look at it and I'd roll my eyes like, oh brother, here we go again. But um, soon after I started to realize, you know, I really appreciated it. Later on, um, after having gone to school, I went away, came back. Um, I was living on my own and mom would still do the same thing. She would pack lunches or pack uh, Sunday breakfast. Sunday breakfast is a big thing for Caribbeans. <laughs> um, Jamaican, ackee and saltfish, dumpling, our favorite foods. And um, if I looked at the bottom of the bag, I would still see a note and still see um, maybe something to read for encouragement as well. Mom loved to dress up. <laughs> she really, really did. And she cared a lot about how she looked, but, um, but she was elegant, classy. Uh, many times people would call her Lady C. The struggle now comes because I have returned home to live with my parents um, who are both aging. Um, I have a little girl as well. Um, I am what you call a sandwich generation caregiver. Uh, that means um, it's a person who is caring for aging parents, someone who has uh, young children, managing all the in, in and outs of young children, and of course still working. And um, the struggle comes just in trying to manage my day. I wake up. I try to get up early, but then my daughter follows. <laughs> I try to just have that little window of time. But oftentimes they all wake up at the same time. So what I find myself doing in the kitchen, I'm scrambling. Gotta get Zuri, my daughter, off to school, making her breakfast. What she eats is different from my parents, making them breakfast. Something that I find really, really profound, I guess, is that Sometimes in the mornings, I'm dropping my daughter off to school, but I'm also now dropping my mom off to adult daycare. And one day I was picking her up, picking my mom up from daycare. And I realized that um, I had to go and pick up my daughter. And I said to myself, I literally said it out loud. I'm like, look at this, this, look at life right now, you know? And it was just a, uh, moment of realizing, realization of um, where we currently were. And of course it concerned me too, because I thought to myself, where does life begin for me? What's gonna happen to my life? The things that I wanna do, the things that I wanna achieve uh, in trying to balance all of it. And um, it's, it's one of those things where I still, of course, I press forward and I continue because I know the love that she gave to me. One of my favorite from the Caribbean, and especially if you're from the country, you don't, a lot of people would mention that they didn't get to uh, take pictures very much, right? So unfortunately, there are a lot of photos of her youth that were not captured, but this is one of her younger photos that I just love. And I actually see my face when I look at it. I will say this though, there are times where it becomes a little, I'd say more so in the 
maybe some months ago, a year ago or so, I, I became angry because I thought, this isn't how it's supposed to play out, at least not right now. You're supposed to be able to be a grandmother to my grandchild. My nephews got that. How come I didn't get that? So I had to um, reconcile some of those feelings. I'll be honest, in the first couple of years, I don't think I was as hands-on because I just didn't know how. I, I really didn't know. Um, my baby was new, my little girl was new, and I didn't have the, hey, Valine, you gotta hold her this way, you gotta feed her this way, do the, you know? So it's, it's literally waking up every day though, even now, my daughter's four, but you wake up every day and it's, whose needs do I take care of first, right? Um, but again, I have to always make sure that it comes from a place of love. Um, I never want it to come from a place of resentment because I'd never felt that from her, so I definitely don't want to return that to her. Um, but where it is, it's hard because I literally see the changes happen almost monthly. I feel as though, uh, I feel as though maybe every three months there's a change, every four months, and then she's stable again, and then there's a dip again, and then she's stable. And every time I see that dip, I have to take a deep breath and, and, and just try to count my time. I try and count my time with her, and I think that's what becomes really difficult for me. I try to be in the present and try and enjoy as much of who she is still. This photo, a lot more recent. At this point, the disease, I found that it was a lot more apparent, but I still had much of her. This was um, a day we were coming home from church, one of her favorite outfits. So um, it's African inspired, and she was the one who got me into loving African inspired clothing. So this one's very special to me periodically she she comes back there's a glimpse of who she is and she will hug me and say thank you thank you so much she does that and I really appreciate it